Hey guys, it is Citra here again with another Runecraft 101 tutorial, and today I am going to teach you guys about automation, what it is, how it works, and so forth. I'm going to sneak back to the end to my lab and do the tutorial there. But um, uh, the first question that a lot of you will be asking is, what is automation? Well, automation is basically what we call Runecraft system to activate runes remotely. There are a number of different ways that you can activate runes using automation, a number of different triggers. For example, the well-known damage sensor, which activates whenever you punch it or hit it with a tool. The redstone sensor, which is how you can use redstone signals to activate runes remotely. Okay, now the lab is obviously in a bit of disrepair at the moment after the moving of Faith Fortress, so I will quickly do some minor repairs on that. It doesn't have to be good, it just has to more or less fill the floor and I'll fix it properly in the future put myself in creative mode for this and essentially before we can start we need a rune to automate or at least that's the, the easiest way to go about it so let's start with a teleporter teleporter straightforward and easy to set up now we have a teleporter imagine that it's targeting a destination it isn't but uh, you can see that it's activated uh, the next step is to make an automation designator. Now that works like this. You need to have four signature blocks. So in this case, I will just go with four cobblestone because that is simple. And redstone goes through the middle like this. You bind it to a tool and then you use it on the block that you want to automate. Now, point of caution here, uh, if I were to click on this block here, it would not automate the teleporter, it would automate this block here, even though you can traditionally right click and activate the teleporter. To get around this, you just need to make sure there's a block in the middle, automate it. You can then destroy the block, I used to think that that was not the case, but um, you can then destroy the block and the automation will still exist, that won't be a problem. Now, we need a method of triggering this automation, and of the ones available, I found one of the most popular ones is the pressure sensor. and that's the one that I use in my uh, mouse trap trap video and that is made like this four iron blocks uh, some wool down the sides and once this is done you'll need four tier blocks and uh, the, the tier blocks control how wide a range you can activate automations from but we don't yet know how what those ranges per tier are yet we'll be doing experiments to work out what they are then you need a signature and a keystone. The keystone does not do anything at this point. Then you lay that across there, put some torches down, and activate. Now you can see that um, if you disregard the uh, debug messages, that's because I've got a dev build, you can see that the pressure sensor was accepted and it will send out automation signals on the four cobblestone signature. I step onto it or within range of it and it activates this. Now, you can have more than one block bound to an automation signature. If I were to create something else, somewhere else, like uh, what is a good example? A topsy-turvy rune. If I were to have a topsy-turvy rune over here, uh, gold in the middle, make it tier 5, because why not? And let's put in a couple of blocks so you can see that it is flipping. And now we automate this block here and whenever I step on this pressure sensor it will flip ta-da ignore the debug messages I should probably turn them off actually alright so I turn the debug messages off and as you can see topsy-turvy accepted exactly the same as if I had right clicked it uh, no change whatsoever now let me see what is next also hang on Yes, the teleporter got used as well. That perplexed me. Ah, I see. <laughs> the topsy-turvy rune has taken apart part of the teleporter, so when I activate it, you can see that it activates the topsy-turvy rune a second. Now, that's a very interesting insight right there. That means that in, if you're doing anything that involving, involves sequ sequencing, the teleport rune got activated first, the topsy-turvy rune got activated second. That implies that it's done in order of precedence. Um, the f earlier in time the automation was set, the earlier in the sequence of automations 
it will actually happen, if that makes any sense. So in this particular case, the teleporter will be accepted, then the topsy-turvy will flip. But if I step back on it again, it will attempt to activate this block in the middle here. It won't find a rune, and then it will activate the topsy-turvy. So yes, topsy uh, the automation signals signatures do persist. There is no way to get rid of one. The only way to stop automating a block would be to change the signature. Well, creative. Change the signature so that it was something else. I traditionally use four cobblestone as my sort of waste signature that doesn't get bound to anything important. Remember to keep a block in the middle when activating automations. And now this won't activate the teleporter at all. Okie dokie, and that's how you activate a pressure sensor and automate a rune so that it works. Now, to test the length, the area of effect of a uh, pressure sensor, I've gone and created this row of spleef blocks here, counted them out, and then um, what I'm going to do now is perform an experiment. I'm going to, they're all automated to the pressure sensor's signature. So uh, whenever I stand on this pressure sensor, it will activate all the ones that are in range, and I will be able to count that. So, okay, so we'll set the rune to tier 1, and give that a wee run. And you can see some of the spleef blocks have turned off. That's exactly what we needed to happen off, and we'll measure. Um, counting 2 for the rune, that comes to 8, which makes sense. Uh, the middle block in this particular case I'm counting is 0. 4, 5, 6, 7. Yes, uh, so 8 for tier 1, and for tier 2, just dig out the tier 1 and reactivate the rune, let's see, okay, so that's tier, that's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 for tier 1, then we go 9, 10, 11, and 12, 12 is tier 2, that's good, let's move on to tier 3, uh, dig out and replace, straightforward, we'll see what we get here. And tier 3, now uh, we can start counting from the tier 2 marker, which was 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Bit of a strange number there, um, but let's move on to tier 4, see what we get here. Now, um, I will skip out some of the counting, because I start from scratch to make sure that I get everything right, but I can reveal that the next answer is 24, that is 6 squares on from tier 3. So, tier 5. Um, I did mess up the synchronization of the blocks here, but a uh, quick reset of the lock block, and we can see that tier 5 is 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. It is another 6 blocks on from tier 4, so that's 32 for tier 5. And now for diamond, I had to extend the course because diamond was a bit longer than I anticipated. Uh, diamond is in fact a massive, a gigantic gigantic 64 blocks that's double the range of, of tier 5 so if you can afford a tier 6 pressure sensor then uh, you're gonna get some range out of that so between that and uh, this that is you guys now fully aware of the details of the pressure sensor and how to set up automations in general I do hope that helps for you guys and I will be covering the other automation uh, sensors the damage sensor the block sensor redstone sensor in upcoming videos Please leave any comments, questions below, and I will be able to answer them for you. Cheers!